the Enneagram makes a fundamental distinction between personality and essence. So you have a personality, which is like your set of coping mechanisms and strategies for getting your needs met in the world. And you have your essential self, which exists. It's like the substrate of who you quote unquote really are underneath all of your psychological activity. And it's possible to contact essence. Like people, when I say the word essence, a lot of times people think it's some airy fairy kind of spiritualized lingo that in a, like a, a, an idealization or a concept doesn't really exist in reality. That's not how I'm using the word. Essence is simply the quality of attention that you have, or how do I put it? It's, the qual it's like a quality of your experience when you get really present. So if you just know how to turn your attention to it, then you kind of can get there. So what I'd like to do actually is just, let's get present together right now. So we're gonna just do a short meditation uh, and then I'll call you out. And during the meditation, um, I'll point to some of the qualities that I'm describing that, that we call essence. So, so if you'd like to, you can close your eyes. And yeah, just take some time to slow down, connect to your breath. And just kind of hang out with yourself for a minute. Just letting the breath deepen if it wants to. Finding yourself alongside your breath there. And what you might notice as you're sitting here um, with, with, with presence or cultivating presence or kind of quote unquote trying to arrive in presence wherever you're at. You might just notice the qualities of your awareness. What's it like to be with yourself in this state? So we'll take a few more breaths here together and then I'll call you back to the room. Take as much time as you like. Yeah, so when you're ready, gently bring yourself back. So, essential qualities are ways of describing the abiding substrate of your consciousness that you can contact when you get really present, like we just did. And essence has many, 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 many qualities, probably infinite qualities. But we, the Enneagram identifies nine of them or nine kind of clusters of them and it arranges them around the diagram. And each personality type is oriented to a particular quality of essence. So as an example, we talked about eight, nine, and one. So the eight 
oriented to the quality of presence that helps me feel most like alive, like I'm like I'm fully here. There's like a, a, a strength and a solidity of knowing my own ex existence. And there's a power in it. You know, so when you get really present, you can stay with, there's that quality is available to stay with, to be with. Or with the nine, we talked about the essential quality of harmony. There's like a way that I am simply without qualifiers in an, in an abiding unity and harmony with all things. That's that, that's the quality. And, and there's like an inclusivity, like everything, everything is allowed to be here. And one, this idea of essential goodness or integrity. It's like, when we're really present, we can stay with, be with the, the loveliness and sacredness of all things. Kind of like nine, it's like, it's like nothing's out of place. There's a rightness. There's a rightness to how things are. And what happens is the personality loses, we lose touch with these qualities of essence and it's, and it's a grief. Um, it's very painful to lose contact with that. And, uh, and so we contract with the personality and the personality is trying to re have you get a taste again of that essential quality. It's trying to recontact that essential quality for you, but it's doing so in a way that unfortunately is actually preventing you from contacting that essential quality. That's the whole catch of the Enneagram. And, but so let's just go through, so we'll type eight. So we have this essential quality of aliveness or power. And when we're abiding in that, then there's no need for us to prove our power. There's no need for us to quote unquote, be tough or to push against things in the world to make ourselves feel like we really exist. And so the virtue arises in the eight, the virtue of innocence, which is I can just, because I trust my power, I allow myself to be radically open-hearted and to be touched, affected by the world. It's like, I allow things to quote unquote, get to me because that's how they touch me. But if I've lost contact with this essential power, then that virtue seems like the farthest thing out of my mind. I can track into what the eights, the eight passion of lust, which is a kind of habitual in, like intensity that is helping me to try to like feel my own power, kind of make my own power happen. But you see how doing that by toughening up, by strengthening myself, by pushing through the world, that's actually it's like kind of addicting, but it is not the genuine nourishment of experiencing my essential power when I get really present. But the more contracted I get into my personality, the more that passion fuels me. And the harder it is to get present and to contact that essential quality. So we have essence, we have the virtue, we have the passion. Just real quick, definitionally, the virtue is the quality of the open heart that arises when we are really in touch with our essential quality. So in the eight, this essential, this virtue is innocence. It's like, yeah, I allow myself to be touched by things. It's like the, you think of the innocence of a child, how they just sort of open arms, um, you know, walk out into the world with a sense of like willingness to be affected. That's, that's what the eight gets. Then we contract into the passion which is in a sense, the opposite. It's like the other pole, all right? It's like what happens in our hearts when, the, when our hearts close and then and they suffer and they're yearning for that quality of essence, but they don't know how to get there. And so what, what, is, the, what, what is the emotional tone that our, that our lives take on? Passion of lust is like, I just can't get, it. you know, I can't, I need to feel myself. That's how that starts going on. I start suppressing my weaknesses or closing myself off, become sort of numb to the world so that it's like with innocence, I'm open-hearted with, with lust, my heart is closed and I, I'm not willing to be affected. I want to toughen up. And then the fixation arises, which is a, which is a way that the mind 
is using its powers of thought to keep the heart in the passion. Okay. So the passion is kind of like the emotional engine of your personality type structure. And the fixation is like the thought engine of it. It's what it's the way that the mind, the awake mind is open and, and has this beautiful capacity to be illuminated, um, to see things from all different sides, um, not to get trapped in any particular one interpretation or story. That's the awake mind. But when the mind gets caught in the loop of personality, then it narrows itself to um, a fixed set of beliefs and stories and ideas about myself that I keep running on loop that keep me in the passion. So for the eight, fixation is sometimes given as, there's a number of ways it's given. Fixation is given as a objectification. It's kind of like, you know, that is a, this is a cup. This is a mouse. You're a person, but they're all just objects. Okay, they're all things that I can uh, move around. <laughs> or you know just or knock around and have a sense of like agency over okay it's very useful if i'm an eight and i'll and what i want is to be to have control of my situation not to be not to be able to be hurt by things to uh perceive the world like this right and the, and another way i think of the eight fixation is like power thinking like who has power who doesn't have power who who potentially has influence over me who doesn't who has leverage those kinds of those kinds of mental machinations those are the fixations that keep me in the passion Let's see so that's the eight so the nine just to i just want to fill this out so we get a real clear idea of this so in the nine essential harmony i'm feeling like in my personality type or when i'm really present i'm connected to the the it's okayness of all things the, inc the inclusive okayness of everything and the virtue arises of engagement it's like if everything's if everything's chill here then i can allow myself to fully participate in life there's nothing that's going to overwhelm me there's nothing that's too noisy there's not too much conflict in the world there's not there's nothing that can that can dysregulate me past my sort of comfort zone because everything's cool everything's okay there's a there's an essential okayness to everything even if there is conflict in the way we normally think of it, essential harmony is inclusive of that, right? There's nothing that can disturb essential harmony. And so there's nothing that needs to take me out of engaging with life. There's nothing I have to run away from. So that's the virtue of, of the nine. The passion of the nine, sloth, which traditionally, or I should say in the modern day, is typically used to mean like kind of laziness. That's not what it means in the Enneagram. Sloth means a kind of like, it's a way that I just become preemptively exhausted by my own sensitivities to the world. It's like, oh, it's just too much to deal with. Okay, so I'd rather disengage and live my life sort of on autopilot and then just kind of drift through the world and through my life without fully being here as a way of protecting myself from the noise and the conflict and the discord of the world. It's like, can you feel the heaviness of that? It's like, ah. Oh, I just don't know if I have the energy, if I can handle it. And the fixation of the nine is what I call self-mollifying, which is a big fancy word. It just means like the way that I, I, try, I, I try to soothe myself, okay? Whatever, whatever my mental, like Russ Hudson gives us the word rumination. And I like that, I, I know where he's going with that, it's like, What's going on in the mind of a nine? Well, I went to the store yesterday and I was thinking about this person and, and then I ran into this person and that was nice. We had a good conversation. I didn't really like the way she said this, but it was nice to talk to her then. And we're just going and going and going and our mind's kind of like a little bit in our own dissociated daydream, not fully here in the world, you see. I like the word self-mollifying because it's like, it's the way that I sort of also tell myself that things are okay, even if they're not okay. It's like, when we get really fixated in the nine, we start ignoring problems and telling ourselves that it's okay that we sort of deny they exist. Self-mollifying, okay? But when I, when I con recontact that essential harmony, then there's no need for that to happen anymore because I can just fully be here. But you see how essence, virtue, fix, uh, passion, fixation kind of forms the structure 
of the personality. So that's sort of any an enneagramic definition of personality is is like using these four kind of pillars. So we'll just do one more with the one, then we'll call this uh, video complete. So. So the one is the essential quality of the one is this idea of like sacredness or goodness or integrity. Like all things have their place. There's nothing wrong. There's an inherent rightness to things. The world is not split along lines of good and bad. Just everything is, you see. And there's a kind of, that brings with it the perception of a kind of loveliness to things like a oh, wow how how beautiful how sacred and and so the virtue arises without awareness of by the way let me just real quick remember that essential quality is just something it's not some airy fair idea it's something that you can perceive right now if you just are, are able to tune your attention to it if you can get really present and just feel it just experience it it's like yeah this table i'm sitting in front of it's a little crooked but how how beautiful and when we're abiding in that oh, oh, that present awareness of essential integrity or goodness then the virtue arises of serenity it's like there's no need to rouse myself to improve anything there's no need to um rail against anything there's no need to be outraged against anything it's like the world is as it is. There's like a radical acceptance of life as is. <sighs> Can you just feel how relaxing that is to be aware of that? Serenity. And then the one, you know, when I lose touch with this, it's like all of a sudden, you know, and I'm not present with the sacred rightness of all things. It's like the world becomes split along these lines, good, bad, right, wrong. Um, you know, uh, good, evil. And, and the world seems to just be tragically falling out of alignment with what seem to be universal principles of goodness or rightness. And that is an, that there's a massive grief associated with that. And the one says, I can't, I'm not gonna live in that world. I'm not gonna live in a, in a, in a world that has, that's not pure. And so I'm gonna do what I need to do to get it back to the way things should be. And so they contract into the passion of indignation. Okay, traditionally it's given as anger, but I think indignation is a little bit more precise. Um, indignation. It's just like, ah, it's that, it's the feeling of grief and and the the, the emotional tone of like rousing myself to improve things. It's like, this isn't right. So I need to I need to go fix it. And I start feeling personally obligated to. There's also a note of loneliness in it. It's like, no one else seems to be caring about this, right? It's like, why? Uh, wh why can't we all just get our act together and be adults and, and, and get things the way they should be? Indignation. And then the fixation that keeps me there is judging. Just judging. Just noticing what's wrong in my environment. Okay, noticing the crookedness of the painting, not the, not the beauty of, of the totality of the room. Noticing, you know, like if I'm, a, if I'm a one and I really care about the environment, for instance, it's like noticing every piece of pollution, you know, and don't you litter, you know, that, that sort of thing. So essence, passion, sorry, essence, virtue, passion, fixation. And as we, as we go through the rest of the types, you're going to see that structure within each one. And so, so yeah, so the point of this video was just to give you uh, an overview of that. So you really had a, a clear understanding of why we talk about these things. <laughs> you know, there's so many words, there's lots of language and lingo in the Enneagram. So I wanted to give some, I wanted to put some flesh on the bones of it. And um, anyway, I hope that was useful.